Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm Dr. John Kaiser, the Immune Doctor. I'm really excited about today's video because I'm finally going to get to give you specific tips on how to improve your immune function and help you to better fight off viral illnesses just like your immune system was designed to do. So let's get started. You know, Hippocrates is thought of as the father of medicine, and he's best known for, I believe, two quotes. The first, do no harm. That's the number one rule in medicine, do no harm. But the second is let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. So let's get right into diet tip number one. Eat lots of garlic. Garlic has been used for thousands of years as an antimicrobial and antiviral agent. It's been known to help keep the blood thin so you don't get heart attacks. And the medicinal value of garlic is well known. In this review article, it states garlic extract has antimicrobial properties against many genera of bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Garlic contains a high concentration of sulfur compounds, which are responsible for its medicinal effects. This is what's important. Dosage matters. In everything I'm gonna tell you about herbs, dosage matters. If you just have garlic once a week, yeah, it's healthy, but it doesn't act as medicine. So if you want garlic in your diet to act as medicine, eat a lot of it. So one specific way I like to use garlic is to chop up a bunch of it and then also to chop up some onions and some shiitake mushrooms. So this is the magic triad. Garlic, onions, shiitake mushrooms. Chop a bunch of each of those three up and get some olive oil uh, heating on your stove. And then you saute the garlic, the onions, and the shiitake mushrooms in the olive oil with a little salt and pepper. It takes about five minutes, and then you use that as a base for one of your favorite soups, as a base for chicken soup, as a base for lentil soup. Any soup you like to make, start out with garlic, onions, and shiitake mushrooms, and you've got a pot of medicine. Tip number two. Eat lots of ginger. Ginger is, in addition to being very pungent and being antimicrobial, ginger is very well known as a potent anti-inflammatory. And if you remember from my previous video, COVID-19 seeks out cells that are inflamed. If you have chronic inflammation in your body, you are raising the chances that COVID-19 is gonna gain entry into your cells. So ginger is a potent anti-inflammatory herb. And this review article states, ginger is an herbal medicinal that shares pharmacologic properties with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, commonly known as NSAIDs. Ginger suppresses prostaglandin synthesis through inhibition of cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 activity. These are pro-inflammatory enzymes, and these uh, properties are very similar to prescription medications, anti-inflammatories, but ginger doesn't have the side effects that those do. You can eat lots of it and you can enjoy eating lots of it. So let me show you a way that I use ginger in my kitchen. First, you get a quarter to a half a pound of organic ginger root. And you simmer it in a saucepan with what's known as simple syrup. I'm gonna put the recipe down in the description as well. And I've modified the original recipe uh, to make it uh, contain a little less sugar. Anyway, you simmer this, the ginger, 
for about an hour on very, very low heat. And it releases all of the aromatic compounds, all of the medicinal compounds that are locked up in the tough root. It, the heat releases all of these medicinal compounds into the syrup. And that's what we're making here. One of the things we're making is organic ginger syrup. So after about an hour, you strain the mixture and separate the organic ginger syrup from the pieces of ginger that have been soaking in the syrup for an hour. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that liquid medicine from the ginger and we're going to pour it into a bottle and we're going to keep it in the refrigerator. And these are some of the things you can do with organic ginger syrup. Now remember, potent anti-inflammatory, potent antiviral, antimicrobial for the respiratory tract, and it also helps promote healthy digestion. We're going to take a tablespoon at a time of that, ginger, that yummy ginger syrup. You take a tablespoon of ginger syrup and you mix it in with some sparkling water, and voila, you have organic, healthy ginger ale. The ginger ale you get in the supermarket these days has no ginger. Number two, mix it with a cup of hot water and maybe some lemon, and you have a great medicinal cup of hot tea, hot ginger lemon tea. Number three, uh, when you mix it with a few other ingredients in just the right way, it makes a great cocktail. I'll put the recipe for that down in the description as well. If you have other ways that you like to use ginger, please leave it in the comments below so we can all see. Tip number three, eat lots of turmeric. Turmeric is the root herb that's commonly used in curry. It's also the source of a supplement called curcumin. And turmeric is well known for antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. Again, bringing the level of inflammation in the body down is one of the most important things we can do to keep us healthy, uh, protect us from COVID-19, and it even slows down the aging process. Now, if you wanna take curcumin in capsules, it's expensive, and you should know that oftentimes not a large percentage of it is absorbed. So I go with ground turmeric, and this is how I use it. One of my favorite soups to use is lentil vegetable. And then I add a half a teaspoon of chopped garlic, which is like one to two cloves. Again, dosage matters. And um, I sprinkle in uh, a good helping of ground turmeric root. So a can of your favorite soup, a half a teaspoon of chopped garlic and uh, a good sprinkling of turmeric root and within five minutes you get a piping hot bowl of delicious uh, strengthening nurturing medicinal anti-inflammatory soup liquid medicine that you can have with a salad or a veggie burger or um, a piece of fish, and it really adds to the meal. Okay, the first three tips uh, were herbal. Garlic, ginger, turmeric. Now, before I move on to tip number four and five, I just want to let you know if you stay to the end of the video, I have a special bonus. I'm going to tell you how you can get a copy of my ebook for free, which gives an entire chapter on how to eat an anti-inflammatory diet, as well as chapters on supplements and hormones and medications. So stay tuned and I'll give you the, uh, how you can get that free ebook at the end of the video. Okay, now things are gonna get a little more challenging. Tip number four is don't overeat. In a recent study published in Nature Reviews Endocrinology, came out in April 2020, it showed that among 383 patients from China with COVID-19, B12 
being in the overweight category was associated with an 86% higher risk of developing severe pneumonia, and being in the obese category was associated with a 142% increased risk of developing severe pneumonia and being in an ICU. You don't have to guess about this. There's a very specific way to do this called calculating your BMI or body mass index. And the way you do this is you go onto your browser or Google and you Google a BMI calculator. And one of the first things that comes up is from the NIH or the CDC. You go to the BMI calculator and you make sure it's switched onto uh, feet and pounds, not meters and kilograms. You enter your weight, you enter your height, and you hit calculate, and it gives you a number. That's called your BMI. If we take a look at the BMI chart, you'll see that 25 to 30 is listed as overweight, and above 30 is listed as obese. So once you know where you are, you can implement a program and gradually bring your BMI into the healthy range, which is usually between 20 and 25. Now this is the rub. I recently was uh, talking with one of my patients and I advised him to lose 20 pounds. And he was like, Dr. Kaiser, lose, really? I've been exercising, do I really need to lose 20 pounds? And his issue was chronic inflammation uh, and elevated liver enzymes, which showed liver inflammation. And I said, well, let's calculate your BMI. And his BMI came out to 33. He actually was in the obese category. So after this video, go online, BMI calculator, see what your BMI is and try and get it under 25. And now tip number five, eat less animal fat. So what is it about animal fat that makes it so unhealthy? Well, animal fat contains what's called saturated fat. It also is the only type of food that contains cholesterol. But the problem with saturated fat is that the fat molecules are highly reactive. And so they can be oxidized by oxygen very easily. And that forms what are known as free radicals. So animal fat is saturated fat and it reacts with oxygen and forms toxic free radicals that are pro-inflammatory and they cause cardiovascular disease and chronic inflammation. That's why animal fats are bad. On the other hand, there are good fats that come from uh, the plant kingdom and from fish. Fats from nuts, avocados, olive oil, uh, fish like salmon. These are healthy fats because they're not saturated, they're unsaturated. Unsaturated fats are anti-inflammatory. They're actually good for you. So try and have the majority of your fats come from this category. Okay, so now I'd like to briefly summarize. The five diet tips for improving immune function include, one, eat lots of garlic. Two, eat lots of ginger. Three, eat lots of turmeric. Four, don't overeat. And five, avoid animal fats. And now it's time for the bonus. A little while ago, I wrote an ebook on treating fatigue and improving immune function. And I want to tell you how you can get a free copy. If you go to my website, which is johnkaiser.com, it's my medical website, uh, there's a link where if you click on that link for the free ebook, it'll download the ebook automatically for you. You go to a page and you hit download. You don't have to put in your name. You don't have to put in your email address. You get a free 50 page ebook and chapter number one is on eating an anti-inflammatory diet. 
So thanks for watching my video. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe and click notifications. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. See you next time. This episode of The Immune Doctor was sponsored by KPAX Immune Formula. More info can be found at kpaxfarm.com.